Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, we all know that uh, improved technology is a critical factor for improving production and productivity of all crops. But as uh, uh, Dr. Vani told in uh, uh, opening remarks that uh, uh, our target is to improve the uh, livelihood of uh, smallholders, millions of uh, smallholders, and we want to create uh, wealth for them. Then uh, market and risk uh, play important role uh, in entire dynamics. And that's why uh, here we are trying to uh, capture the challenges to manage both man market and risk for uh, dryland cereals and pulses. Uh, one more thing here I want to add, uh, since uh, 2016 is the uh, international year of pulses, that's why uh, our presentation will be more tilted towards pulses. Uh, setting the context that uh, in Asia uh, we know that uh, there is a steady population growth and per capita income is also rising. So with this kind of changes, uh, we have seen that the demand for uh, proteins are increasing and demand for carbohydrates is decreasing. And uh, uh, there is one study by Peter Hazel uh, in 2007 uh, who forecasted that uh, in real terms in the long run, world food prices are going to decline. And there is a trend also, means after uh, reaching a peak level in 2007-8 during uh, world food crisis, the uh, world food prices is in real terms is started declining. And in fact, currently we are at a 2007, 7-8 uh, years low uh, level, although uh, at, at a granular level there may be high price for certain commodity, but overall uh, it is declining. So what are the issues uh, to, to deal with? Uh, we have declining demand for dryland cereal, and, uh, uh, and that, that, that can be uh, seen here with uh, crops are losing grounds, for, particularly for uh, sorghum and millets. But demand for pulses are rising, but acreage are not really uh, encouraging. There is an imperfect market and that is really hurting to smallholders and uh, smallholders are not getting uh, uh, due benefits uh, out of uh, rising price. Uh, there is a huge production market and price risk for small and marginal farmers and volatility of farm incomes for dryland cereals and grain legumes farmers are always rising and profit margin are uh, squeezing and shrinking. So the greater challenge is to consistently improve the farm income and uh, the for, for smallholders who are growing dryland cereals and pulses. If you see that uh, for Asia as a whole and for the selected country where we are interested to work in, that uh, area under sorghum is fast declining. And in fact, total production is in declining by 2.26% annually since last 75, uh, 76. While for millets, area has declined, but production is almost stagnant. And so uh, that is a concern for uh, entire group. And in, in case of millets, India is contributing more than 80% of total uh, millet production. In case of pulses, uh, again, except a uh, few islands like Myanmar and in recent years India, area is declining for pulses in other countries also. But uh, uh, total production has increased and uh, pulses production has increased by 2.5% per annum during the last 30 years, 35 years or so. Myanmar has emerged as the second largest uh, pulses producer and uh, uh, that is a big advantage for India that uh, somehow we are, we are managing our growing demand for pulses. What is happening to total demand? Because when we, we discuss about market, it is not only the place where commodities are transacted. We talk about entire demand or after the commodities or crops leave the farmer's house or farmer's ownership until reaches to the consumer. So in between what is happening, so entire, in, entire uh, things we are discussing under market. And so uh, export become important and international trade uh, become important. And here we see for dal and cereals that uh, domestic demand as well as export demand is declining. Only uh, last few years China started importing uh, uh, sorghums and uh, millets mainly for uh, feed purposes. And India is exporting uh, these commodities, sorghum as well as millets. In case of pulses, except Myanmar, all the countries have become net importer. So demand for pulses are increasing consistently. But there is a big risk for uh, Myanmar because entire export is targeted to India. There is only one country, single country export destination for, for uh, Myanmar production. And uh, uh, Prime Minister of India has already given a big challenge that by 2022, we want to become self-sufficient in pulses production. And that is a big, big, big risk for a country like Myanmar, who is depending on single country export uh, for pulses. 
So regarding this, uh, we are carrying out uh, one research project and uh, under uh, CRP PIM, and in this uh, we we try to understand the entire pulses value chain and the various constraints and risks faced by uh, by the farmers who are growing uh, those pulses. And uh, pulses, uh, this policy and institutional gaps existing in entire uh, pulses value chain. And we, are, we will also try to explore options for uh, interventions and feed for, feedback for innovations to breeders or other biological scientists. So this is still a work in progress. And in fact, uh, we are carrying out survey work in uh, two states, uh, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. And uh, uh, we, are, we are targeting uh, 250 farmers for PGNP growers and 250 chickpea uh, farmers. And we are, we are interviewing all kinds of stakeholders in the entire value chain, whether it is uh, traders, dal millers, warehouse, wholesaler, retailer, as well as APMC Mandi, which is a regulated market in India. We have around 5,000 regulated market in India where uh, entire uh, agriculture commodities are traded. And this, well, what is the initial leads we are getting uh, from this activity? That uh, farmers are getting uh, many uh, production risks and those risks, uh, uh, you all know that there is a weather risk, climate risk and pest and diseases technology, input risk, input market, as well as political measures. And here I want to highlight uh, uh, two things, that uh, in India we have around 1 billion uh, mobile users. And it was surprising for us that uh, in our survey area, we could not find any farmers who were using mobile for getting information related to production technology or even for price information. And that was surprising for us and in fact we have taken uh, some of the mobile numbers of some farmers have we registered those mobile numbers in APMC Monday so that they can get uh, uh, price information uh, on, on daily basis. For input information or technology informa information, 90 to 95 percent farmers dependent on uh, in input dealer. It means uh, our research organization or even NAR system or whatever technology uh, service providers are there, uh, they are not reaching to those small holders. So some of the big farmers or large farmers are getting access, but uh, small holders are mainly depending on input dealer for those information. Another thing uh, for India and all the pulses, uh, this is a one information that uh, even uh, in case of chickpea and PGNP, more than 50 percent or 50 to 60 percent uh, of uh, major uh, pulses growing districts are harvesting only one ton per hectare, 0 0.5 to one ton per hectare of crop yield. And in fact, many districts are still harvesting less than half ton per hectare of crop yield. This is across chickpea, pigeon pea, lentil, green gram, whatever crop you take. So this is again a challenging task to improve the uh, crop yield of all these pulses. We have also seen in another study that uh, it is not only uh, yield instability which, uh, which drives the entire production of uh, pulses, because we have seen that uh, even sorghum and pearl millet has lower instability in some of the districts, but area or acreage allocation has not improved for those crops. But in fact, uh, uh, area has gone to such crops where demand is increasing. So it is always a demand driven and wherever demand is generated, uh, farmers go for uh, allocating uh, those crops. Another question comes that who is driving the pulses value chain? We as a technology generator, as a research institute, we, 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 we develop uh, many technology but uh, the, the variety or uh, plant production uh, chemicals or production uh, practices, farming uh, practices. But there is surprising information coming from uh, our initial uh, survey from this uh, pulses value chain. There are commodity which is moving from farmers to dal mills or wholesalers and retailers. Dal mills are who, uh, who are processing entire uh, pulses grains. And in case of pigeon pea, almost 95% or 100% Pigeon pea is being processed and made as a dal. But in case of chickpea, it is almost 60 to 40 percent, uh, it is converted into dal. So there are some farmers who are uh, selling their produce at their farmer's level, itself, uh, at their household level itself to village traders or local market. But there are uh, medium and large farmers. Some of them are putting their produce in cold storage or warehouses. And then uh, they, are, they are seeing whenever time uh, comes the, with a better price, they are releasing the, their stock. And so they can get some kind of better price over the over the different months. But from where value is coming? Value is determined at either at wholesale level or dal miller. Wholesaler are giving that okay, we want to have this kind of commodity. 
one or two percent of uh, uh, other material mixed in this one, maybe soil or any dirt material. But if you are having this kind of standard uh, material, then we will pro provide X amount of price, rupees 800 or 8,000 or 9,000 rupees per quintal. So price moves from wholesaler or dal millers determine that which kind of variety farmer should grow in the sense that when we, we surveyed and interviewed dal millers, then they were saying they have certain preference for uh, in case of pigeon fee for Maruti or for, uh, in case of uh, chickpea for JG11. Why they want that, uh, they, they told that uh, these two variety, we can easily remove the skin from the grain and so it makes easy to convert into dal. And that's why if uh, different variety comes into the market, if, if dal millers and processors are knowing it is different variety, they will, they will quote lower price. So the value is coming from dal millers and wholesaler and that's what we want to, uh, we should intervene there and we, we have to inform those dal millers whether whatever new technology we are putting in the market, they should be aware that there is no constant like that. Because we also put that question that uh, ICRISA has developed a new hybrid of pigeon P2740, whether you will accept or wh what is your uh, uh, take on that one. So they are still unaware about this hybrid. So even whoever farmers has grown this 2740, they told that we are, they are mixing the grain and they are selling as a Maruti. So there is no separate market coming for this kind of hybrid. So that we should keep in mind. In markets, again, there are different constant and challenges for the farmers. There is no objectivity in quality assessment. Farmers need to bring produce to Monday and in fact only 20 to 30 percent produce is coming in a regulated market and rest of the commodity is being sold at a village level, at household level. There is no agency to ensure minimum support price which government of India is, is, is announcing every year. And in fact, later slide we will see that thing. Small and marginal farmers can't keep a small quantity in warehouse. If some farmers is producing only 50 kg of uh, pigeon pea or chickpea, they are uh, unofficially they are not allowed to put in warehouse and, and uh, cold storage. Here is the uh, price. Government is announcing minimum support price every year for two season, Kharif and Ravi. And uh, many cases, uh, as we know that uh, in case of pulses, there is no problem price overall. Many, uh, many farmers are selling their produce at much higher level of minimum support price. But our problem is those farmers who are selling their produce at lower price. And lower price is sometimes it is 20 to 30 percent lower than minimum support price. And in fact, in that case, Farmers are not even getting whatever cost they have, uh, they have incurred in producing those commodities. And therefore, there are many questions coming out of this kind of trend. That who are those farmers? Whether they are small and marginal farmers, whether it is 100% of their produce, if it is so, then their livelihood is really at a stake. Because whatever they have produced, it has faced less than 20 to 30% lower than minimum support price. And from where, which region it is coming? Is it random distribution or it is following certain pattern? Then what percentage of their produce is fetching lower price and what was the reason? Was it a different variety, poor grain quality or unclean stock or poor bargaining power of those small holders? And therefore we, 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 we must uh, investigate further that how to control or manage such kind of stock for those small holders. And what is the mechanism to cover risk of value erosion for those small holders? So these are the risk factors. Uh, uh, and. Uh, Miss yield volatility, price volatility, resource scarcity, policy changes, even demand volatility as uh, we have seen that uh, demand is created at different uh, stakeholders, then market accept acceptability of a new product and therefore uh, we know that uh, volatility in agriculture is expected to increase at all three levels, at farm level, at market level as well as price level and that uh, we have to manage how it can be managed and there are uh, four factors which uh, you can say that uh, improve technology we have to increase the availability as well as accessibility to improve for improve technology for the small holders there are three eyes that infrastructure institution as well as information will play important role enabling policy environment uh, like insurance as well as minimum support price kind of thing and then growing market demand so all these four factors will be important for creating wealth for small holders and improving their income. India has taken some initiative and in fact uh, uh, 
national agriculture market was launched in uh, la last month itself in april but uh, still there are some uh, certain hiccups the challenges for small and marginal farmers will remain there because there is no uh, no elements of decentralization of market whatever nam is saying it is only for regulated market and at mandi level so what will happen to those small holders who are trying to sell and who are selling their produce at their village level or to a small trader there is no standardized process for quality assessment there is no transparency in pricing again it is a big question for a small holder some initiative were taken in certain state like in karnataka and gulbarga where mobile as they are, uh, uh, are doing this thing crop insurance again government has taken a steps and but again there is, there are some challenges to implement those things and how to uh, include small holders and share cropper and that needs to be taken care then uh, so if we want to manage both markets and uh, risk there are four elements which uh, uh, we are proposing that uh, one is assured and transparent pricing new market structure third is linking farmers to consumers and i think fpo is a, a good initiative i think this will become a game changer for a small holder and finally pilot, uh, plot wise crop insurance if we can ensure then uh, small holders can be benefited these are the future work plan uh, this uh, policy and impact group are uh, taking and in fact uh, some of the activity we are already we have already started and uh, on some of the things uh, we will uh, we are proposing to take up like uh, in integrated value chain analysis and then ict based market development study thank you yeah Uh, this is related to i just want to add a, a good news to share with the audience the one of the slide which says national agricultural market which the government of india has recently launched on april 14 in 586 the major contribution is done by the ecdc when we prepared the prime minister's study documents just want to share that that one way how we can make a difference to the policy in india thank you uh nice to see that you know some farm, farmers could um, get prices higher than msp but at the same time you mentioned a good number of or a large number of farmers did not really get the advantage of msp but we know there are good number of institutions of the government which are supposed to ensure uh, msp to the farmers so what were they doing whether did you interact with them and uh, no in this survey we didn't interact with them but uh, we have earlier study and we are uh, miss uh, in almost all states government has, uh, are procuring and ensuring minimum support price for limited commodity and in fact that's what uh, rice and wheat are always a, a preferred commodity for government because government intention is to provide food security so nutritional security has never came as a national agenda and that's why uh, rice and wheat is a preferred commodity and some places when a uh, lot of uh, noises are created then government chip in and then right last year government has also procured some pulses but this is not a normal thing uh, usually because macro trend shows that in case of pulses market price is always higher than minimum support price but that's why it never get attention of media or other research group also but when you go on granularity then you will find there are farmers who are who are in mute condition they just sell their commodity and go back to their houses so they never come in limelight but uh, i think as a researcher we have to investigate that who are those farmers and how much they are selling at so low price and what are the reasons so that that is a concern our concern uh, this is just a comment about the uh, feedback from dal millers you know sometimes it is very misleading now he presented that you know jg 11 chick pea variety dal millers they say this has the best milling quality which now covers 80% of the area in andhra pradesh when we introduced it 15 years back when annagiri was in 90% of the area same dal millers they said that you know this doesn't have the quality of uh, dal milling quality as good as annagiri so they were paying you know 10 to 15% at 100 to 100 rupees less price for annagiri to farmers okay but this variety had you know very high yield so farmer adopted even they sold at lower rate to these dal millers and these dal millers had no choice made only minor adjustment and now they say that you know jg11 has the best dal milling quality so we have to be very careful we have to breed for their dal mill or they have to make some minor adjustment this is my comment 
you mentioned again, about uh, you mentioned about managing markets and risks, and one of the strategy was on uh, farmer organizations. So do you have any information or data on uh, how much have they mitigated or what's the potential there? Uh, in in that field, uh, we are work, we are working on that, and uh, in fact. Uh, 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 in to my knowledge, I, I didn't find any any farmers producer organization who are particularly uh, working in pulses uh, or in this kind of commodity. Uh, that uh, it didn't came to my knowledge. I think my comment goes to what. Uh, Puran was saying, we have had the same experience with groundnut in Malawi. The UK market required us uh, a certain type of groundnut, which was also low yielding and very scarce. So when we made the high yielding variety abandoned in the market, then they changed and started buying. So I think the, the trick in getting the processors to change is to get the farmers to adapt and make it available in large volume. Then they will make a change in their process. Yeah, uh, just a small response to Dr. Purangoda as well as uh, Moses. That same thing we are also telling, that we have to create demand also. I and mean, when we are introducing new technology, then we need to communicate to those stakeholders also. We have to convince them that, look, this technology also has same kind of milling quality. Otherwise, it will take, learning curve will be longer. We can we can shorten that learning curve for even uh, millers also. I had a chance to meet one of the NGOs last week. Uh, it's called Center for Science for Villages. They try to innovate a lot of science into their one. And he said they have a portable dal bill which is taking from farmer to farmer to add the value chain. So they're selling the dal and not the crop to the market there. And he has got a number of these institutions that is coming. So a lot of people are small, small NGOs are working on that line. And we even don't even know that what is being done, especially the markets. Uh, what I would say that uh, what Puran and uh, Moses was saying, market is not fair for the small farm holders. Market exploits the weak people. And that's where basically the dal mill or any trader for that reason Whatever the new product comes, even if it is superior in quality, they try to exploit it till they have no choice. So you have to have the double strategy. If you go with anything, like scientists say, we don't want to change anything what we are doing. Same way the dal mill fellow also says that we want to do the same thing. We will not add another 10% cost to our dal mill. So it's a difficult question. We cannot say that only the dal mill's response has to be taken. Basically, if the farmers are happy with the cooking quality and that, market will develop automatically. If the supply is not there, they have to buy that. There is no question about that. Number of questions that the interest that you've sparked here. and, and in, So that's got to translate over into research questions that are going to follow up with, with donors and funders that will support those research questions. So that's what I would encourage take the energy that, and the questions here to, to link our uh, socioeconomic research up with the breeders and, and define research questions. Uh, and a key one for me is, is the, what is the lo uh, likelihood of Indy being able to become pulse self-sufficient? I know that we've got a policy paper out there, but I'd, I'd like to understand whether what's the probability about increasing yields to be able to achieve that, or there's got to be some level of substitution you're going to grow pulses rather than something else. And, and so we've got to understand what the, what the reality is to meet that uh, demand. Yeah, I, I think uh, my response to this question will be this top graph. And uh, another, uh, which I am getting a document from Pulses of Studies, is saying that, uh, in fact, one expert committee said that uh, if we want to become self-sufficient in pulses, we need six to seven million hectare extra area for pulses production. And I think Puran Gaula and team has, has estimated that there is a rice fellow, similar uh, quantity or similar area is available as a rice fellow. Besides that, even if we are not expanding that uh, extra area, I think we have sufficient area here uh, already uh, given there. We have some districts and uh, like 15 to 28 percent district where 
very high yield is there, more than one ton per hectare. I think uh, a stretching area under pulses in those districts will not be difficult because farmers have proof that they can grow uh, uh, pulses with higher yield and higher profitability. There are some districts where area is very vast and so we can concentrate on how to improve the yield even from 1 ton or, or 0.5 to 1 ton per hectare to 1.25 ton per hectare. I think a sufficient uh, surplus quantity can be generated. And there are many districts like 70 to 80 percent districts in case of particular black gram, green gram and lentil where we are producing only less than 0.5 ton per hectare. So uh, replacement of uh, variety or uh, even purity because if you see that uh, still 70 to 80 percent of pigeon pea and chickpea area is covered by JG11 and Maruti. If breeders are saying that they are having a variety or habits uh, which can perform 20, give 20 to 30, the farmer's concern is okay you give me variety because we have also asked that some kind of a question like what are the parameters which will determine to replace your variety right here answer is you give me such variety which can perform in good rainfall condition as well as in rain fed condition when rainfall is very less or like last year when we had received only one or two rainfall so if in both condition your new varieties can give more than 15 to 20 percent deal we are ready to accept it provided seed is available for us. So I don't think there is a big challenge and a trend is also already showing here. You see, area as well as production in uh, India has already started moving up and that's why I'm saying that there is a challenge for Myanmar in coming here. So people should be very much aware for that one. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think we, we may have to stop. I know uh, money is a very important issue. You can see that there's a lot of interest when it comes to money. But I think we are going to have about 20 minutes discussion. For those who have questions, you can